What's up, everybody? Welcome to my chess stream here on Lee Chess and Twitch. My name is International Master William Pascal. We're going to be playing Blitz and Classical Chess here on Lee Chess. Let me just update the board because my online, my broadcasting software here is always making it disappear on me when I start the stream for some reason. You can, uh, you can try it out before you start and it looks fine and then you go and it's not working anymore. All right. So if you'd like to challenge me, you can challenge me to five minutes to eight minutes with a small increment, something between three and five seconds. Let me get my settings. Video capture device running. We had some problems during my simul uh, getting it started yesterday with the um, with the drop frames and the video, but it looks like it's okay for the moment. Welcome everyone, it's Monday morning. We're playing classical and blitz, mostly classical chess. I mean, people have the option to play five minutes if they want to, but we get more of the longer games. So I think that's our fan base. For the most part, the players who like longer games. We've got Kyria Kospez, Asi Passes, and Aprili. All these players are somewhat regular here on our stream. So let's get it started without further ado. Kyria Kospes, welcome to the stream from Greece, I believe. We're going to play e4, our focal point of our opening repertoire right now. We're working on playing e4. The last Blitzstream I had a little accident in the French defense, but uh, we looked at that and it was kind of like face value. We had um, a reasonable position I was unfamiliar with and just dropped a piece. So it wasn't really because of the opening, but I felt uncomfortable in that winner where we'll see what Kyria Kospas does. I've kind of avoided the winner where, um, when I've been white. Now, I'd like to learn to play 92, actually. Maybe we will play 92. I mean, I certainly know how to play it. Um, I've never played the, the Tarash in, in a tournament game, but... Mir. Now F4. We have played this in Blitz. Gotta go knight on D to D2 to F3 because this is this gets the knights tripped up. If you put a knight on D2, knight on F3. Good morning, Asi Passes. Um, I feel a little bit like a, a weak wimp, you know, like avoiding the winner after losing a 12-move game where I dropped a piece on Friday. But um, honestly, I really would like to start playing 92 in general. I think it's it's really a very, very good variation for white. Now, Kyria Kospes goes bishop e7 here which I'm not sure. Um, I, this this might be might be a main move. Skirmisher says uptime. Um, Bishop e7 probably is is like main line um, or a main line, I should say. If I play bishop d3, black plays queen b6, and I start running into problems with my d4 pawn, that's an issue. So maybe h4 here. A lot of times you see instead of bishop e7, cd, cd, bishop b4, check, king f2, and the king just walks out um, to f2, it's very safe. Wait, has good attacking chances in this line. Um, I've never played the Tarish French like in tournament games, but I had a friend who was kind of a pretty good attacking player who used to play it a lot, and I, I borrowed a lot of his ideas. Guitar player, bro. There is a bot. There is a bot. When did that happen? Well, man, you haven't been here in a while. You have to... <laughs> Keep up with the Joneses. Okay, f6. Now we can develop our bishop, I think. 
You snooze, you lose, guitar player. Uh, Mubot is on the case. But there's no substitute for human moderators. Absolutely not. Just have to have Mubot in place just in case. Um, thank you. I don't know if you ruins here, but but somebody's uh Yeah. Nice. I love this bot, man. Queen B six now. Well I can just simply play ninety two. It looks like everything is kind of placed perfectly for me. He wasn't actually even threatening to take on d4, but I do need to complete my development. Crusader of Hope, good morning. Um, there was a guy who wrote his words. What's that? To make my screen bigger to read it. Who wrote the words all and caps and got timed out because of it? All. Caps and got timed out because of it? Well, that's kind of odd. Um, now what? If I castle, is there some kind of tactic or something? I don't really want a castle, to be perfectly honest here. King f2 doesn't look good. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. If king f2, cd, cd, well, it's just a very short timeout, so he'll learn not to do caps and all. Um, it, you know, it's not a 600, like, second timeout, like the more extreme ones. King F2, CD, CD, FE. FE, and then there's this funny move, Knight takes E5, when I'm like pinned two different ways. So King F2 doesn't really work, but I think that White has a good game anyway. So I'm wondering, wondering if I could do Bishop takes H7 check here. I, I don't know. Bishop takes h7 check, king takes h7, knight g5 check, pawn takes queen h5 check, king g8, pawn takes g5. Like the problem with that line looks like he could do rook f5 at the end or something. No time to discuss the bot now. Um, Maybe just bishop e3. You know, because I think of it, okay. I guess I could castle. I don't really want to castle with my rook on h1. You know, it's just a pity to castle with my rook on h1. Last move, bishop takes h7 check, king takes h7 check, knight g5, f takes g, queen h5 check, king g8, h takes g, and now rook f5 stops g6. I don't see a mate there. He sort of gets away. Yeah, um, I'm not sure that guitar player can add commands. I think he has to actually be um, added by me to the Mubot. I haven't done that. He's not, um, he hasn't been here in a while, so he wasn't added to the Mubot list. I don't think he automatically gets Mubot powers if uh, if he hasn't been added to the list there. We'll have to uh, update that. Alright guys, I love the attacking chances that White usually gets in this variation. 
I think this is ris riskiest, probably riskiest line for Black against the against the Tarash. Honestly, this is a very fun attacking variation for White. Much safer to play the type, kind of IQP positions. Now, what's this? What's the deal if I do the sacrifice now? Bishop takes h7, King takes knight g5 check. Bishop takes. Um, yeah, actually, I was over overlooking some variations there. Okay. Knight, bishop takes, king takes, knight g5 check, pawn takes check, king g8, queen h5, and again, rook f5 type stuff. Is there any difference here? This is actually good for black. I'm going to have to launch into some kind of sacrificial attack here, it looks like. Because he's got knight takes e5. So knight takes e5, bishop takes h7 check, king takes... And now it's not that clear. <coughs> I, I definitely misplayed this. He's played superbly. I have to go into this. Which looks good for black. Oh, I just miscalculated. Wow. So all the time I've been thinking something I couldn't do with queen h5 check. All the time I've been thinking that was possible when I couldn't play it. What is wrong with this position? You guys have been talking about knight g5 check and all this with my knight on e2. What is up with that? I've been talking about illegal variations with, with queen h5 check. It just goes to show you what happens when you play a line you don't usually play. How... Nobody pointed out that I'm talking about queen h5 check when I can't play that. That is really bizarre. Why is my knight on the wrong square here? Wow, I just had this so massive hallucination the entire game that my queen could go to h5. That's, that's explain. I mean, I'm trying to explain this. That's how it happened. The entire game I hallucinated my queen could go to h5. And I'm talking about variations, nobody's like, what are you talking about? Um, guys, let me know when I start to say crazy stuff, you know, that, that's like impossible. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, commentate. Black not grab on b2 because he had a crushing variation. This is like, he's up a piece here. I'm still not sure why I'm thinking my queen can go to h5. Because my knight's supposed to be on g1, isn't that it? it Maybe my knight's supposed to be on g1 or something. What is going on? All right. I ended up playing, yeah, knight e2. And I'm supposed to have my knight on g1. When did I play knight e2? It was move 10. So right here, I played knight e2. Instead of knight e2, this is probably, like, best play by Kiri Kospez. I'm just looking at the position while I'm waiting for him to make a move. I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this position, honestly. Like, maybe knight h3 or something? So knight e2 is just a terrible mistake. This is just this position you guys see in front of you now. I'm not supposed to play knight e2. And I didn't realize... Sadly, I didn't realize at all at any point you know that <laughs> that's crazy I re at no point did I realize that I couldn't play queen h5 until it was like literally time to like play queen h5 and I physically couldn't do it okay that's good that's the first game of the day you know that's what happens sometimes but um it's been a while since I played this line, so 
We had a little hallucination. It's all right. Thought I had queen h5, winning a piece back, but there is a problem when you've got a knight in the way of the queen. Um, I like the way it is now because now it says, what? I'm better than 97.2 classical. Better than 72.9 bullet. What's up here? Kyria Kospas played this pretty well. All right. Well, dude, I don't think you could have played this much better than you did. Um, we're just lost. Every move I choose is kind of a stupid move. King takes, why did I do that? Queen takes would be better. Wow. Um, You're like out for blood today. He's out for blood. I didn't realize you were such a French defense player, man. I didn't play that, e that many E4 games against you. But now I know. I've got to be careful. Mostly I play d4, knight of three type stuff. Barely alive here. Rook on the seven. <clears throat> we are down a piece here. It looks pretty serious. <coughs> I think we are lost. Yeah, all right. This was a disaster. Good game. I hallucinated. Very bad hallucination here, guys. That after the opening, I really thought that my queen can go to h5 because usually the knight doesn't go to e2, and I just routinely put the knight on e2, but. Forever I was calculating variations and nobody told me that I couldn't put my queen on h5. Um, yeah, I can't play knight e2. It's a very natural move, but it's not necessary because black isn't actually threatening to win a pawn here. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, and bishop g6 check wins the queen. So white needs to make a different move in this position. I don't remember what it is. King f2, uh, king g3 is normally played. But after pawn takes pawn, if king f2, pawn takes pawn, um, you know, obviously I don't have the tricks, so I can't play king f2. So I don't recall um, what I'm supposed to do in this position. I mean, I just, I don't know. I have to look it up. All right. Let's go back to this list of players here. Congratulations to Kyria Kospaz. Nice game. We're playing black here, losing game one. an A3.
anyway, I like to play the dragon, and, and g6 makes sense against a3. This is usually takes the fun out of the a3 variation for white. After all the talk about queen h5, he plays queen d3 instead. <laughs> but my piece was hanging on, uh, I had a piece hanging on, <clears throat> on d3. Um, so queen d3 protected it, yeah. Well, the queen h5, it was a little late for queen h5 at that point. With no, um, no other pieces whatsoever supporting an attack. It was It was kind of late for, um, for queen h5. I want to say I almost hung in there, but not really. Rough start. French defense giving me problems. It's two losses in a row against the French defense. Friday, I lost a piece in an unclear position in the opening after 12 moves. And again, around move 12, around the same point, I made a very bad mistake brush up on our French defense theory. All right, so e6 here. Welcome everybody. We had a simul last night. It went uh, pretty difficultly. I, I was really, really having a hard time with a lot of strong players. Not high rated, but everyone played well. We didn't have like any 2300s or really high rated opponents in the stream, but uh, as there are sometimes. But I thought everybody played me really tough yesterday, so. This is interesting. We don't really know much about Asi Passes, just his ratings, but not sure where he's from. The, uh, the setup for white is one that I have. I've seen. Um, Occasionally from some strong players, uh, like last week I had a Brazilian IM play this sort of formation against me and uh, play very positionally. It's basically like a strategic positional line. This is the correct move. This is how the Brazilian guy played against me. Um, black is like pressuring D6. So I'm thinking maybe E5 with tempo here is probably a good move. If you're gonna give me a tempo, I'm gonna switch the, the structure. But I lost a, a pretty tough, tough game against uh, this Brazilian I am. He played very strategically. This is not a tactical open Sicilian. This is a purely closed position that, um, it's not in the style, it's not for everybody to play this kind of variation. You have to really like closed positions. My bishop on g7 is a problem after e5. The aforementioned game I played against Brazilian International Master, um, I think I was okay, but, uh, but it was kind of a suffering sort of closed position where black can't have a lot of fun. Queen d2 now. I'm not really a big fan of that move. I don't know. You're stopping me from castling, but I'm actually... I'm not really in a hurry to castle. It's not a bad move, I guess. But <clears throat> we could have played bishop g4. I just don't think it threatens anything. Guitar player says, I'm always feeling cramped as black in the French Caracan, too open as white. I think one of my few wins against me was in a French, very similar. That may be the case. Um, well, I've always played knight c3 in my limited experience against the French, so I wanted to play knight d2. I have had good results in blitz with it, with knight d2 and the variation I just played with Kyria Kospez, but um, I think he played an accurate move order, and, and when we got to that key position, I, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. But it's a pretty difficult line for black if white plays correctly. Clearly, I made, you know, a major error. Castling queenside, kind of risky for white. You know, I mean, it's it's a sort of solid line. I don't think I'd want to, like, play castles queenside to up the ante here. I mean, 
it seems to me that seems to me that white wants a quiet game when you play this variation normally. A castling queenside, wow, it's we could both castle queenside. In the closed Sicilian, it's usually not not really good for white to castle on the queen side. This is black's strong side of the board, usually with c5. I have a kind of pawn advantage with the pawn on c5, more space on the queen side. So normally, you know, you're talking about the closed Sicilian, where I've got a pawn on c5. It's not good for white to castle queen side. In the open Sicilian, you've traded off the pawn on c5, so it's a little bit, a little different. Um, we don't really have a space advantage. We have an open file to work with in the open Sicilian, which is dangerous too, but usually, you know, manageable for white. But I haven't seen a lot of examples in my in my experience where castling queenside in the, in the closed Sicilian works. Occasionally, if you can play like very very quickly, um, you know, bishop h6, where I'm I'm committed to castling, you play bishop h6 and like h4 and attack me on the king side. Um, and then I've seen castling queenside sometimes in the normal closed Sicilian. But here I'm not committed to castle, so. It's like an ambulance fest here in, in Budapest every single day. It's so weird. Um, I, I mean, I lived in the city in Boston for like 15 years. I never, I never heard ambulances every five minutes. It's really bizarre. Um, casting queen side myself here. Well, I don't think that would be necessary. I talked about it, but I want to keep my options open. I'd like to get a pawn on d4 trapping that bishop. He can't really take without taking with the bishop, which is a major positional concession, I think. Not not great, but... He can play bishop takes d4 if he wants. And... Um, he plays with, like, two knights, but his knights don't really have any outposts at the moment, so... I mean, I think black is comfortable here. I won't say I'm better, but... I'd rather be black than white. Let's just put it at that. Guys, we're usually streaming for two and a half hours from 10 a.m. to 12.30 CEST. So we got, we've got two hours left. Um, you can challenge me from five to eight minutes with a small increment, three seconds is preferred. If you do challenge to like five minutes or faster time limit, then you can do a five second increment. Has anybody seen Yurun, my moderator, my other moderator? It's a good thing that guitar player showed up because usually Yurun says if he's not going to be here, but I didn't hear anything. He may just be like snoozing in the background. Queenie won. Okay, that's fine by me. I mean, this looks like maybe we should just castle. I mean, <clears throat> this moment now takes the pressure off of H6. I like the fact that I, you know, don't have to castle on the same side and I can attack him on the queen side with my pawns. I was thinking about playing b5 last move, but I thought, well, let's get the king to safety first and then play, you know, b5 and a pawn attack. He can force his hand with b5 at some point. Okay, so he wants to, like, pull the bishop back to d2, I guess. Actually, I could have taken on c4. I wasn't overly enthused with it last position, but now um, it's looking viable. I want to open the c-file. The other way is tempting too, to extend the bishop's diagonal, but I don't think it really makes that much difference. Now, I think this is... This has got to be good for black. Which rook do we use? I mean, f5 could really be a profitable move at some point. So I guess we'll go with the a rook. French defense. I honestly... would like to switch to doing that 
Tarash when I'm white, but I haven't studied the theory very deeply, as you guys know. I recommend the Tarash to, to students. If they ask me what they should play against the French, I think that it's really difficult for black. Now, Asipas is just sacrificing a pawn here. I mean, I don't think the pawn is is the only problem. He also has to deal with the, the pressure on the C file, which is really nasty. And now I can just take a second pawn. Um, this This is total speculative sacrifice, but the problem is his center is just melting, and if, if he takes an f5, I'm playing queen f5. This is... We got a reprieve this game of uh, the losing streak. Someone asked if I could do a review of my simul games. I think we'll do that this week. We'll pick out some of the more interesting games for my, for my Sunday simul and go over them. Andrea, welcome. Yeah, Jeroen's not here. Maybe he's recovering from the simul. He um, he played well against me. He he fought for his <coughs> excuse me. He fought for his draw. Um, he was a little bit, tiny bit worse, but he really did defend well. We had a whole bunch of draws yesterday in my simul. And normally that only happens when I'm like giving away draws because I'm about to lose to lose on time, but not the case yesterday. A lot of really close positions. Now nice move, knight g3. I overlooked knight g3, as I tend to overlook a lot of moves. Uh, from my opponent lately, but um, too much center for black here, so we don't really have to do anything special, not get mated. You'd really prefer to go, you know, to try to get the knight into f5, but you don't have much time. It's like an unequivocal disaster for white. You don't have knight takes g6. So, I mean, White misplayed this, but I don't really like the idea of castling queenside in the closed Sicilian, or any kind of closed Sicilian. As I said, I mean, pretty much there's one time in, in the line with like bishop e3, 5, bishop e3, queen d2, where they play the very quick bishop e3, queen d2 line. There, there's like one or two variations where you can play bishop h6 and attack black quickly, but if, and then castle queenside. But other than that, um, I really don't approve of this this concept of castle and queenside in any sort of closed Sicilian. You do see it from uh, amateur players, but it rarely works. All right, thanks for the game. Aprili is up next. Eight three. We've got a lot of challenges. Aprili hunt the king. Geese. Max one two three. Pawn seven. Halligator and Andre is so cool. It's gonna that's gonna be like the whole stream right there. I wouldn't I wouldn't really think anybody else needs to challenge me, because we have pretty much um, all the games we need for today. All right, so knight f3. Let's try something a little bit different here against Aprili d6. He just quickly played knight c3. Well, I guess. <laughs> um, okay. It's sort of random. So what are we going to do here? If I play e5, I'm in a Philidor. I don't really want that. I think you're playing something... Sicilian would be cool. Um, c5. But it's not really a Sicilian, but it will become a Sicilian. I mean, he could do something different. Yeah, that's what I thought. Wow, very sophisticated. Very sophisticated. e3. Aprilis from Poland. I don't think we knew that before. That's a new a new bit of information. Um, I feel stupid for playing d6 in this particular kind of formation, but... White also has e3, which isn't that great. I think we don't want to play the knight to c6. 
because of d4, d5 type of stuff. That's one thing we, we don't want to do here. e5 would be nice, but white has d4 breaking up the center. And that looks really good for white. If my knight was on f6, I could play e5 and on d4 play e4 and have a good game. But here, without my knight on f6, I guess... We're going to have trouble kind of maintaining the center when white plays d4. And I don't want to give up the center. I'm thinking what to do here. Try something original. I'm really going to have to play something original. Wow, bishop e2. Not bad. I'm getting my bishop outside the pawn chain. Bishop e2 is a quiet move, and I feel like after that, it's going to be hard for white to... really achieve an advantage. Yeah, now knight d4. Sorry, d4. I I can take, and I can also play any normal developing move, except for maybe knight c6, which allows d5. So d5, actually interesting, a tempo down, but pawn takes c5, is this a threat? No, g6, Asi passes. I'm sure if you check some article or whatever pamphlet on a3 that exists, um, they have to discuss g6. I mean, it's it's a really important option in the last game. All right, <clears throat> now, so you're threatening to take on c5, which is an ending that I don't think is really great for me. Knight d7 is kind of a passive square for my knight. I really don't want my knight on d7. It's not necessarily bad. I don't like it though. So I guess I have to play something like d5 a tempo down. It's okay. I could also play c takes d. So what we got now is basically we basically got, um, well, that's a strange move, knight d4. It's not a bad move. It's not a good move. I don't really have an opinion about it um, in terms of good or bad, just unusual. If I just play simply with bishop takes d4, it's probably a little bit better. I don't really want to give up that bishop for the knight. I wanted to play knight c6 here. I should probably stick to that. But I'm really playing bullet chess. Maybe he has to go somewhere. It's basically a Rogozin reversed. But I think White has squandered, you know, whatever chance he had for an advantage by playing too quickly. I have Queen A5 check here. It's good to pay attention from time to time. Now, I may end up just having to retreat again myself. That's okay. Ninety seven feels a little safer, but it kind of clogs up my position, so <clears throat> I really has seven minutes of his original eight left. I try to play <laughs> Goofy Gumdrop says I try to play like Tile. 
but I just end that material down in an ending. Um, what's that? Bronx Defense says, International Master William Pascal. Are you answering somebody's question about who I am? Alexei Sheriff was a student of Talos. Well, there's all the, always this, yeah, I mean... I wonder, you know, I mean, obviously Tal influenced Shirov and Shabalov, but I mean, we hear this sometimes that, that Tal was their teacher. I don't know the details, you know, or they were a student of Tal. I hear the same thing about Shabalov. It would be interesting to know exactly, you know, how seriously they were taught by Tal. Um, you know, because Tal wasn't ever rega regarded as like a trainer or something. Um, you know, I'd like to know. That's kind of an interesting story. I'd be curious to know, you know, how much actual teaching, um, you know, did Tal do of, of players like Shirov and, and Shabalov? He wasn't really a teacher, per se, a chess, a chess coach, per se. Um, Tal was a quintessential chess player. Quintessential, quintessential. Um, okay, he had an, an obvious influence on, on these guys, but, you know, I'm not sure, like, it was a, such a formal relationship. I don't know, though. It would be good to know, like, a story. If there's anything written about that, it would be it would be good to know. Maybe Shirov has, has written about it. I don't know. Um, Shirov is not a prolific writer. He has a game collection, Fire on Board. Doesn't really, you know, do too much biographical type of stuff. Shabalov only plays chess. I don't think he even teaches lessons. Doesn't need to do that to support himself. He enjoys playing. All right, <clears throat> what are we doing here? We're getting low on time. Pretty really fifteen hundred. Pretty limited sample size. Positionally, he plays well. Understands this concept of like maybe playing for c four, bishop c three. Well, <clears throat> it's not a great, it's not a great um, bishop. But now, why would you take back with the pawn there? Yikes. It really needs to slow down. Used to just playing bullet chess. See what bullet chess does to you guys. You need to take your time. Got, got a lot of time here. Actually, he has just like two, two blitz games and, and 107 classical games. I don't understand why he's playing so fast. Well, first of all, maybe like g6. Making Luft. Normally you play h6 to make Luft, to create like less weaknesses in the position. But here with a dark squared bishop, I thought maybe my bishop will go back to like g7. And um, be very powerful there. I have good control of the dark squares, so... I'm, I'm just talking about this position just in general. While we're here in this position, we can talk about why choose h6 or g6 in a specific you know position. Weight is lost here, without a doubt, but we can still learn something. You know why? Why would you choose like g6 or h6 in this position, for example? And I thought, well, it's it's actually an interesting, somewhat interesting concept to choose g6 over h6 here. <clears throat> Taught to sit on your hands while playing when I was a kid. White just um, playing in a hurry, you know, 
We've got a lot of time. We gotta remember, maybe Way isn't used to playing with an increment. There's a big difference between playing like 8-0 and 8-3, for example. With the 8-0, he has a chance to win on time, you know, to just flag me outright. Maybe he's not used to playing with an increment, and that's why he's playing quickly, but it makes a big difference, the three second increment. Basically, White's never gonna win on time, unless I have a lost position, or get into a really, really difficult critical situation, but I mean, it's unlikely that's gonna happen in, in such an easy position to play. So I really had a perfectly reasonable game, but just played too fast. And uh, we do see that a lot here. Yesterday, my simul, not as bad as usual. Um, a few players who played like still had 40 minutes left at the end of the game, but most, for the most part, people were taking their time a little bit more than usual. Still, I got in very bad time pressure. We play with we played with 40 minutes um, each with a 40 second increment and 20 minutes extra for me. I'd like to play an even longer simul one of these days. To be perfectly honest, but. It is hard to spare, like it could take as long as like four and a half hours if I made the if I made the time control sixty sixty. You're talking about like a simul that could last like over four hours. That's really long. Basic principle trade pieces when you're up material. Crusader of Hope. I found they have an interesting word in Bayern. What are you guys talking about? Really strange words. Um, all right. And then he blundered. So I really slow it down. Need to slow it down. Take your time. Chess is not meant to be played bullet. I mean, bullet is a fun excursion. It's kind of like I mean, I would equate it to something like on the same level as Bug House, honestly. I mean, it's a fun excursion and, and it's it's funny, but you know, it's not really going to improve your game. You're probably better served by doing like tactics problems and stuff. All right, guitar player is up next. If anybody loses their, their challenge, um, let me know in the Twitch stream and I will uh, get to it. So I'm not going to shy away from playing E4. I welcome anybody to play the French. I don't know whether I'm going to play knight c3 or knight d2. Maybe I'll play both, you know. We'll uh, we'll double fist it. And the Scandinavian. This is actually maybe one of guitar player's normal openings. Concentrate. Philosophically, I, I don't really, you know, I don't really agree with Queen D8. I appreciate the novelty of it. Instantly, H6. I don't think, um, Scandi is my first and foremost opening is black. I don't think I like H6. Scandi. Um, all right. H6 probably wouldn't be my choice. Because if you play queen, if you play bishop f five, you run into queen f three. So, I mean, h six, it's just not a constructive move. But maybe it is. Maybe it is. Looks like guitar player has studied this. If I play bishop bishop d3, queen takes d4, loses a queen, right? 
you know, the thing about this is we don't have much here. I feel like h6 is a slight weakening of black's position. It's only really, only really viable for me to take advantage of it, I guess, if, if that bishop's traded off. Not much, though. You can try to win a pawn here. Queen b5 check. Knight d7, queen takes b7. Rook b8, queen takes c7. Queen takes... Take, take, rook takes b2. King d1. Kind of complicated. But it's probably... Probably necessary. Just moving instantly. Yeah, knight c6 there too. He moves instantly like it's theory or something. Okay. It's a well-known theoretical line. I don't understand why you wouldn't at least take a second to think about the moves. I'm just like giving a lecture on taking your time. And guitar player just moves instantly. Every move. Castling queenside runs into bishop a3. It's not necessary to play... Um, it may not be necessary to play king d1. I could play something like... Knight e2. Just develop. Giving the pawn back. Notice your rating is going up, guitar player. You're up to 2135 now. It's pretty solid. Don't even start to tell me this is some position you analyzed. Um, there's no way in the world that's, that's true. King d1. Knight g4, knight h3. King d1, bishop b4, knight e2. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I mean, I'm just going to trust my instinct here. Guitar players, when I say the Scandi in my first foremost, I mean, it's the only thing I really play against e4. Well, you know, I'd eat my shirt if you ever, like, intentionally sacrificed your, your c7 pawn like this and analyze the position like in advance um, it's extremely rare position bishop g5 h6 bishop f4 bishop f5 bishop d3 take take I, I really doubt that this has been prepared in advance I think he's just trying to act very nonchalant and move instantly but I don't really believe this this is a fully fully sound pawn sacrifice. I have my doubts. Black does not have a lead in development. He doesn't have that much support for the rook on b2. I mean, if black has the tiniest lead in development here, maybe, but it doesn't seem like it's enough. He might have just enough. He might have just enough for compensation for the pawn. Bishop e7. Hmm. I expected a more ambitious move. Bishop e4.
Guess I should try to trade this off. I don't know. Looks like white's slightly better with the extra pawn. I don't think it's a line. I mean, we just made it up. Um, Bishop g5 is extremely rare move. I mean, h6 is probably fairly rare. And uh, and then, okay, I'm hard pressed not to take that. If I take it, I've got no development. Knight b6. So isolates. Makes my A pawn very vulnerable. But otherwise, I feel like I'm going to lose. Um, I'm going to lose control of c4. My bishop is a bad piece. It's a tough position. He has much more time than me. What is your rating over the board rating, guitar player? You play like your 2100 or something. Um, C3, I guess. they're talking about every international flight had Mrs. Doubtfire I don't remember that I don't think the Lufthansa had Mrs. Doubtfire C3 I've been going with mostly Lufthansa lately when I fly from US to to Europe. I've been happy with them. Flew Swiss Air back from the US. That was good. No, no Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm a little surprised by this move 95 now. This looks like the first move I can I can really almost Assuredly, say that I don't like from guitar player. I 
I mean, his position has some, you know, it has some merit. It may may be holdable for black upon down, but I don't think that knight d5 was, was the most critical. Come to think of it, bishop, bishop g5, h6, maybe some sort of computer suggestion. I looked at it a little bit with an engine, and h6 might have might have been the, the suggestion. Although knight bd7 is okay too. Black playing extremely logically. I mean, guitar players over the board rating must be pretty high. I mean, he's played so well against me. Yes, he's lost a lot of games, but it's always at the end in like a drawn position or um, he blunders in a position he should never lose or something like that. But absolutely plays close to master level strategically. What's your rating, guitar player? You have an over-the-board rating? I don't think you've ever ever mentioned it, have you? Rook C1. And G5. It seems a bit weird to put the pawn on a dark square. What if I play a4? So we're going to find out. It might be a mistake. It does look risky, doesn't it? To play a4. c4 takes, rook takes. All right, <clears throat> just play a quiet move here. You don't have an over the board rating. Dude, how can you get that good without an over the board rating? It's almost unbelievable. And you're not even a blitz player. That, that's the weirdest thing about it. I mean, I can't do that. Playing like Karpov, or something. it feels like I'm playing Karpov. Wow, sees everything. Be lucky to draw a pawn down, probably. Knight d3. What's up with knight d3? Seriously.
Good move, me. Oh, I see what's up with that. Well, he missed it. Man, this is tedious, dude. I'm probably just lost. Mm Another high quality game. a nice move. Yep. That's two games in a row he won against me. Okay, hunt the king. It wasn't really a good game. I played pretty badly. But it's hard to believe that you're you're that good without ever playing in a tournament game. That's pretty unbelievable. You were never lost or even close to lost. You were always better. The entire game, dude. The entire game down upon you were probably better. I mean, White was begging for a draw. Maybe I had a draw. At the most. No, I mean, guitar player, you, you play really, really strong. I mean, it's I wouldn't normally believe anybody if they told me that they're that good without playing in a tournament game. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, but... It's very hard to achieve those kind of skills without spending a lot of time in over-the-board situations. 
there are a few people who can achieve that. Knight to d4 here, it's an awkward situation with the knight on f3 not really well placed in front of the f-pawn. This is kind of a standard piece misplacement. You want the f-pawn to be able to go forward to f5. I think I started playing seriously near the end of 2014, maybe a little into 2015. Oh, I see. So you became master strength in one year. That's like impossible, dude. That's impossible. What do you mean by playing seriously? No, dude, but you say that we're 7 and 22, but if you look at the games, I mean, almost every single game you just, like, blundered in the last, like, few moves or something. I mean, you always had a good position. Like, basically, it feels like, you know, you just kind of make one-move blunders in the end. Like, but every single game you had pretty much a good position. Oh, I just blundered a pawn. All right, well, that'll make it interesting. <sighs> Bishop B7. If you really went through our games, guitar player, I mean... I don't have too many convincing wins against you. I like win on time or... Um, thanks for the take back. I win on time or you make a like crazy blunder in a mutually equal position and time pressure or something. But outplaying you almost never happens. A bit like you, Crusader of Hope. I mean... But I don't believe that people can really get to master strength without some kind of serious... Um, practice in long games so if it's at least like correspondence chess or something like that but you know I mean I don't understand how it's possible if you were like a blitz master like a coffee house blitz player but you're not you know um, it's a it's a really deeper kind of game that you play If you're like a tactical coffee house blitz player who's 2200 because they calculate really well and you said you never played in the tournament well, i say well that happens all the time you know i see people who are like just really good at calculating they play a lot of speed chess in the park and they can get to around 2200 strength but guitar players game it's it's pretty strategic and and like kind of deep um 
this last game was very impressive. I mean, King D7 and the whole way of like sacrificing a pawn long term felt very, you know, like a very deep game. You know, not like somebody who's never played in a tournament. I don't understand if I play OTB. Well, I mean, I mean, how how many mistakes did you make in this game? Like none. Maybe the minuscule mistakes, but um, and that's only in an eight-minute game. I make a lot more mistakes than that, dude. Um, I don't know that I'd I'd beat you. I don't really see you know. Um, any weaknesses in your game just on time at the end basically well I mean it's possible you're just a genius I'm not I know that <laughs> um, I could never get to master you know without a thousand games or you know 500 I don't know 700 tournament games um, practice And a lot of studying, a lot of studying. It took me a lot of work. I guess I'm not that naturally talented. It's more about hard work. Um, yeah, I'd be willing to bet your inaccuracies and blunder are at the end there when we were in time pressure. You had 91 at one point, winning a pawn. That's probably one of them. But before we got to time pressure, you make no mistakes. Do I think he was cheating? You should say so, or am I misreading your tone? I think something's not right, you know. I mean, he's either not telling the truth about not being you know, ever playing a tournament game or, or something because I can't rationalize it. I'm not saying he's using a computer, but I can't rationalize how that's possible, how he can be that good, you know, without ever playing a tournament. It was the same exact thing with, with our good friend. I don't know if you were here, Bronx Defense, but it was the same with, uh, it was the same exact thing with uh, Sophia Rogers, this 2200 strength player who claimed they never played in a tournament, you know, and I just, you know, if you're like 1900 or something, I could see it. But I mean, to be that good and never play in a tournament, it feels like they're not telling the truth. You know, that's that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm, I'm like, I just, I'm not saying he's using a computer, but I can't believe that somebody would be that good. You know, I feel like you're not telling the truth. You know, um, I, I just, I can't conceptualize it, really. Um Sophia was cheating, but only with an... I don't know if she used an engine. I mean, she was definitely using the opening book, which guitar player doesn't do. I'm sure he doesn't use an opening book. Um, so, he's not Sophia. I mean, Sophia was 100% was using opening book. But it's the same thing about, um, I never played in a tournament game. I mean, I don't mind admitting that someone is, is good, but... I just can't conceptualize how you can be that good and never play in a tournament game or something equivalent to a tournament game like correspondence chess or something like that you know um, I, I just can't understand how it's possible um, no in my tone you know I'm not accusing anybody of being a computer because I don't have evidence of that, but I just don't see how it, like you can you can say that you never played in a tournament game and be that good. It's hard to believe, you know. Maybe just it's possible, but I don't really see it. How you have that much experience to play that sophisticated game? You know, if he said I played a little bit, I'm eighteen hundred. Okay, you know, I would I'd be like totally wouldn't wouldn't mind, but the no tournament games is like what? How is that possible? Um, geese is black here there's a certain discipline you know that you learn 
and you learn the game deeply by playing tournament games. Um, you need something to compensate for that. Yeah, and like saying you become a master in one year, it's really over the top, you know? I don't know, man. I like guitar player, but it's a little hard to believe this like story. <clears throat> If you look at the game he played against me, this is like a master strength game. Very sophisticated to sack a pawn, um, play positionally with the king in the center as compensation. You know, that's not something you just like learn from playing Blitz online. I mean, I can't believe that, you know. Lance never played over the board. <clears throat> he has that GM strength. What do you mean he never played over the board? It says he's NM right next to his name. Or LM or Oh, he's just an LM. So you're saying he claims he never Yeah, but does anybody see him? I mean, is he is he a real person? I haven't seen his like picture or identity or anything. Dude, but I mean, you know, in Russia, he's from Russia, right? I mean, Dude, it's more reasonable to believe that somebody from Russia could do that. You know, they have a lot of informal games um, in, the, in the culture. There's a chess set in every house. I mean, it's still unlikely, but it's a little more believable. You know, you could, you could get to master strength in Russia playing with your uncles, you know, or something like that. I mean, or in the park with really strong players. It's, it's a little more believable from Russia for a Russian, a Russian player, but, um, hunt the king. I don't know. I've been kind of perplexed by a guitar player for a while because he, you know, he does play very well. His score is dis disproportionate, uh, disproportionate to the way he's played. You know, he's, he really shouldn't be negative score against me. I mean, he's he's got like I'm up, I'm up like 3 to 1, but it honestly doesn't feel like I should be up at all. It feels like it should be about equal. Um but he just kind of like loses games at the end that he shouldn't lose. That's the way I felt about it, you know, all the time. I mean, I never felt like I outplay him. I feel like I'm playing an equal and then he'll just like make a mistake at the end and lose. Yeah, I mean, you go to the Pioneer's Palace and, you know, you go to the red local cafe in, like, a Russian town and there'll be, like, probably two or three players who never played in a tournament. Um, you know, and they're more strategic than their American counterparts, probably. The park players in Russia. I mean, you've got coffee house tacticians, too, but um, you're also going to see, like, really strong positional players at the local park in, uh, in Russia really strong technical players who never played in a tournament, um, which you would never see as much in the United States. Can you compare English versus Spanish openings? From White's perspective, well, I mean, the, the, the Spanish is more op a little more open, you know? You're opening the king. You're opening diagonal for the bishop. And that's why they're called open games. Generally, the game opens up more. But the Spanish involves bishop b5, and then it reverts back to a kind of strategic game. Not like the classical games with bishop c4, the Italian game that opens, the position gets very open quickly. The Spanish is more strategic. The English is very strategic from the outset. I mean, you're playing c4. You're not necessarily opening the game. Depending on what black does, you know, black can also try to open the game against the English. If you play sharply with a quick d5, the games can become like a Sicilian. So I think that both those openings, the English and the Spanish, are very strategic openings for white for the most part.
Well, it's an interesting thing to hear. I'm not sure what to say. I know I'm not lying. This is guitar player. I'll try my best to get an over, over the board rating because I hate hearing you think I'm being dishonest. For now, I gotta go. Well, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, but I just, you know, in my experience, I can't comprehend like somebody can be almost master strength with zero tournament games and no correspondence games. Um, but in a strategic way, you know, if you said you played in the park and you punished me tactically with sharp play, I mean, that I see, you know, I've seen a lot, but this like Karpovian style kind of, um, that's, that's what's hard to really digest guitar player. I mean, I know plenty of hustlers who are master strength based on tactics, which are easy, you know, easy to learn, but it's just hard for me to comprehend, so just, you know, don't... If you're telling the truth, then just ignore me, I guess. I mean, it's just hard for me to to comprehend how it's possible. I guess I'm just old school, but... I mean, you'd have to study extensively, and... It feels like you need more practice, you know, in practice. And you don't have the practice aspect. I don't see how you get that good strategically without without having more practical um, play. In the Analyze menu, we have five of the best moves. What? Was always did compatible moves computer only. One move wasn't compatible with the best computer's move. What are you guys talking about? You made two inaccuracies, one blunder. I don't know. I don't understand piece of sheets. Uh, I don't understand his um, his sentence structure there. But I'm gonna blunder a piece here, maybe. Bishop takes d e five. Um, bishop takes e five. Bishop takes e five. It's good. So, guitar player, I'm not even sure he's talking about you. I don't understand what he's saying. Sledgy and guys, now in Analyze Menu, we have five of the best moves. And GP was always... Oh, he's talking about guitar player. Always did compatible moves with computer. Only one move wasn't compatible. Yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to start a big witch hunt that the guitar player is a computer piece of sheet. Um, I just meant to raise the point that that uh you know he's it's just hard for me to believe anybody's that good without playing in a in a tournament ever you know this is the story of of sophia rogers again which is one that really bothered me a lot you know so maybe that's why i'm so sensitive about it because the sophia rogers incident was kind of disturbing to me um but you know, piece of sheet. Please don't accuse people of being computers directly. That's not what I'm, what I'm saying. I'm just trying to understand how he's that good. Maybe he can tell me more information about how he became so strong. Um, you know, without playing in tournaments. Um, because I don't think our score is really important. You know, if you look at the games I played with guitar player, he's just making blunders and time pressure, which anybody would. You know. But always he has a good game. Two moves was bad. His intentional blunder was two. <laughs> intentional blunder. Okay, that's enough with the... With the... Um, <sighs> with the conspiracy theories. But no, I mean... I just thought that maybe guitar player... wasn't telling telling us his true rating or something like that because a lot of people may be like you know they're embarrassed maybe 1600 and he doesn't want to say it or you know i don't know you know I mean, there's a lot of reasons why people might hide their their true rating maybe they're, they're not satisfied with it so they don't want to admit what it is um, i just find it hard to believe that he he doesn't have any rating at all
This is just so common online it gets hard to believe. The misunderstood genius story. You have a message, William. Um, I know, but I <laughs> I have a lot of messages. All right. Um, if it's something pornographic, I don't want to read it out loud. Let's see. Um, but I don't like to read my personal messages here on the stream. So, C takes D. No, I didn't mean to uh, to concretely accuse a guitar player of using a computer. I'm just trying to rationalize how he's that good. Um, he, he doesn't really play like a computer, I would say, you know? I just thought it's more like a, a good player with a lot of experience. And today I was shocked. I mean, I thought he had a rating, you know, all the time I thought, this is a guy who has an over-the-board rating. He just never brought it up, you know, never mentioned it. And today, for the first time, for the first time, I heard, you know, that he doesn't have a rating. So I'm just kind of in a state of shock. Um, you know, that's why I'm reacting, because he played a lot of games, like 20-some games, and I never knew this, this, uh, this fact. Um... There's no inherent capacity, innate talent, and a difference between all chess players and merely work ethic. Did you have that argument with him, Bronx Defense? Because you had a very, very large kind of disruptive argument once about this concept, I recall. Um, I was kind of like gonna like time you out because you were really going at it, um, fighting about this thing. Um, I don't remember who it was. Well, I had to work very hard to become a master of chess, you know. I mean, I realize there are some geniuses, but I have to take everything with a grain of salt. It's the internet, you know. Um, and I am paranoid. I mean, there's no question about it. I'm paranoid about people cheating here. Um, Paranoid about people cheating in my simul. I'm definitely wrong most of the time when people, when I think people are cheating in my simul. Usually I go back, I looked at the games, and I'm like, okay, I was wrong, you know. Um, it's our nature. Um, once we get, like, you know, cheated by somebody, then we're constantly thinking everybody's cheating. So it's kind of human nature. It's a defense mechanism, you know. Um, but I also, you know, I have a tendency toward being paranoid. Probably not as bad as some people. I know, like, there's a lot of talk about, like, King Crushers constantly accusing people of being computers. Yeah, I mean, you can go over the top where, like, you think everybody's a cheater. But I feel like I, I definitely have a tendency to be paranoid. And I fully admit it. Um, but I think I'm within the bounds of kind of, like, a reasonable amount of paranoia. Um, and... I've, I've definitely encountered it in other places. Um, when I'm playing online poker, like <laughs> even last week, um, <laughs> a funny thing happened where there was this like ringing at the door and I was like, I was like, who is it? And they were like, police. And I'm like, oh my God, they've come to arrest me, but I don't know why, you know? And you start thinking like crazy things, like what, what did I do wrong? Maybe because I'm an American and like the government hates American, they came to arrest me or something, um, you know. And so you answer the door, you're like, your heart is racing. You're like, why is the police coming to like, you know? And then it turns out they just like had a call about noise or something, and you're like, oh, you know, they're not coming to arrest me because they're like, like uh, the far right government started ordering the deportation of, of foreigners or something, you know. So anyway. My point is that, like, people, you know, it's a natural tendency to kind of become become paranoid about things. And some people have it more than others. But here, doing chess online, um, look, we can't even have tournaments because people are cheating with computers. So it's it's a real thing, and, and um, it's hard to find a happy medium, you know, to be rational um, about, like, the fact that people can be cheating. At the same time, you know, to maintain a rational balance but not be 
not be paranoid um, too much, but be paranoid enough that you're like, you know, you're not getting taken advantage of. It's really hard um, to find a balance. You guys are having the genius discussion while I'm giving a big speech about paranoia. <laughs> the Benefits of Paranoia in Society by International Master William Pascal. Um, no, but I mean, it's, it's an underlying thing about guitar player that I, for a long time, thought that he plays very, very well. And I was like curious about what his rating was, but I never brought it up. I just never never occurred to me at the right time to mention and today finally after all these years I asked and what's up with F3 what's up with F3 here wow um okay F3 in this position I mean, I've seen it against D6 but f3 against knight c6. Why do I not know this position, Max? Um, Gary Hertz said, I have been accused cheater because I only have 2,200 plus blitz. But I had multiple FIDE tournaments with 2300 plus performance. Well, dude, you have like pretty much like, you know. Look, if you log on to like chess.com, which I don't really like, but just for an example, okay, you log on to chess.com and you click on somebody's profile, and there's just a list of like, you know, comments from people who everybody says is a cheater. You know, everybody's profile has like, this guy's a cheater, this guy's a cheater, this guy's a cheater, this guy's a cheater across the board, you know, and I don't like that feature on chess.com that people can just put comments on your profile and stuff. But, you know, I mean, Gary, everybody like gets accused of being a cheater at some point. Um, but you have like solid evidence that you're not a cheater. If you had a 2300 feet eight performance in an over the board tournament, then there's no question, you know, I mean, those people are just, you know, angry that they lost the Blitz game to you online or something like that, which is what we typically see in the in the chess.com profile. Um, okay, here, what about d5 is, like, tempting, but what is going on after bishop b5? I guess I just play bishop d7. This is a very unusual position. All right. Um... Maybe it's his receding hairline was causing him to be so aggravated. Thank you. You're, that's a very mature comment. Um, all right. We're having a discussion. The two reasons I think GBP is real is because his personality when communicating with others in the chat, he doesn't play perfectly, it's just very good. Um, well, I mean, I liked him. I even made him a moderator because he's very friendly and, and contributing. Um, but this, this news is like kind of shocking, you know? I mean, it's kind of mysterious. Bronx Defense was like, wow, you know, if you want to make an accusation, why don't you come out and make it? Well, I don't really know what kind of accusation to make. You know, my accusation is this something he's not being honest about. Something. I just felt it was like he wasn't being honest about his his rating or something because I didn't really suspect him of using a computer. I have a good score and whatnot, but then when you look back on it, you know, I, I never remember like outplaying him in like one game. Like, it always was the same, always the same routine that he was good, you know, he had a good position, he was equal or better or, you know, something like that. And then there was like a blunder at the end. And it was like again and again and again, like the same kind of pattern. Um, you'd have to actually play the games, Crusader, to kind of get the feeling I have about it, you know. Um, this like, almost like he was like losing on purpose kind of thing. 
that's the kind of way I felt about it. I mean, this is not this is not like new. This this is something I thought about before. Um, it it just felt like guitar player was kind of like almost throwing the games to me at the end. That's the way I feel about it. I never mentioned it on the stream, but that's just the way it, the pattern just established itself. You know, um, again and again he would like give me this brutally tough game, and again and again he would like blunder or lose on time right near the end of the game. And I was like, well, that's convenient. You know. It just seemed like you outplay me every game, and then you make like a blunder so you don't win or something. Bronx defense, exactly. Like something doesn't sit right. Well, it's been, it's been, you know, I like guitar player. But he's a very positive person in the stream and stuff, but it doesn't sit right, and it hasn't sat right with me for a while. You know, that uh, there are a lot of games where he just kind of loses at the end, like. He doesn't want it to look suspicious or something. I don't know. You know, he doesn't want to beat me every game, or I just—it just doesn't sit right, like you're saying. It, it just doesn't feel a hundred percent right, you know. And then there's the argument, which, which I see a lot. You know, um, his standard rating is a lot higher than his blitz rating, but I guess with his style, it kind of makes sense. You know, he's not overly tactical. Um, and a lot of people do have that, so that's not any kind of conclusive evidence. The guy's cheating. Um, just because his his standard rating is 300 points higher than his blitz rating, um, a lot of people seem to have that sort of sort of rating distribution here. So I mean, that's no sort of hard evidence that you know, anything funny is going on. Just like you said, something doesn't really sit right. He seems to play a little too perfectly. Um, too often and then just conveniently blunder the game at the end but I, I you know this is just just an intuition It took a while with with Sophia Rogers till I was 100% sure that something was wrong. You know, I mean, for a long time I didn't mention it. I let it just go. I let it go and I let it go and I let it go. You know, until the point where it was like ridiculous. You know, um, and then and then it became like just too much of like a elephant in the room to to continue to ignore it. Um, all right. Anyway. We still have 45 minutes left. Let's kind of move on from it. Um, focus on the game. I'm sure everyone will be happy for that. I just want to be open about it. You know, if I have a weird feeling about a player, um, I feel uncomfortable, like, just, you know, keeping it, um, keeping it inside forever, you know, so. I'd rather, like, get it out in the open and talk about it. So, I don't want to hold resentment for anybody or suspicion that they're, you know, not telling the truth about something for a long time. The smile that smells like cookies. Bobby Fisher. Bobby Fisher, I don't really know that you... You were here. Um, Sophia used chess... Uh, opening book against me may have used assistance too I don't know but it's definitely lying about it's definitely lying it was definitely lying about you know not playing in tournaments that one I'm 100% sure of I mean we can we can speculate that it's possible that guitar player is telling the truth that he's never played in a tournament he's a real person but with Sophia I mean it's just ridiculous it's obviously like a guy who's 2100 and wants to pretend he's a girl on the on the chess site for whatever reason you know maybe masters will like give him free lessons or whatever possible reason you could have for for like having a fake identity as a girl um people will show you more friendliness i don't know you know but that's like for me that's like beyond a conviction i mean i was 100 percent certain about that one
Um, this is this is a player. <laughs> this is a player who like played the openings better than than like Kamsky. Um, well, that was my joke. A player who never played in a tournament, whose opening repertoire was much much better than Gata Kamsky. But the problem with Sophia was that they wanted to like be active in the stream, like, and then like you know. I mean, what am I going to do? Like, continue to interact with this person who I suspect is, like, using an opening book against me? Pretend nothing's happening? Like, it started to become, as I said, like an elephant in the room. Everybody was suspicious. Something was wrong, you know, so. Um, but as I said earlier, you know, many times I'm paranoid. And especially when I don't have time to really evaluate the game, like in the simul when I'm in time pressure, I'm thinking that people might be cheating, but usually not. Um, 90% of the time I'm wrong, you know, when I have kind of suspicion about a particular game. They just play well. People can just play well, you know. It's just that when you see it on a regular basis, um, again and again and again, you know, I've played a lot of games with someone, you get to see patterns. Um, but I've got to be admitting that, you know, people can play really well. And people who are 1600 can play like a master one game and then 1600 the next. It does happen. And and that's uh, that's real. I mean, it really, it's, it's not impossible to play very, very strong games from time to time. And not be like an overall strong player. Bronx Defense, what are you putting there in the... I don't want to just click on random. I don't really like the random links. What are, you, what are you actually putting a link to in the stream? Can you tell us what it is? Um, Bronx Defense, what are you talking about? Guitar player Brett account was closed for cheating. Unless that was some troll account of someone else. Uh huh. Well, all right. Lee Chess is not the FBI, you know. So we have to be a little bit. Um, we have to be a little bit more like the fact that Lee Chess closes an account doesn't scientifically prove that somebody was cheating. You know, sometimes maybe one player will complain and then the administrator will just take their word for it and and ban the account for cheating um, I've seen Lee Chess kind of jump the gun on people so in my mind that's not enough evidence I really need you know to see a little bit more you know I, I've definitely seen people banned a little too quickly so that's that's supportive evidence but I wouldn't you know if that wasn't, that could be a troll's account too. Um, it's obviously suspicious, but it's not a hard, fast evidence if Lee Chess says you're a cheater. Actually, I mean, the thing I like about Lee Chess, unlike the Internet Chess Club or something like that, you know, people aren't paying memberships, so Lee Chess has no problem with banning people for being cheaters. I talked about this a while ago. With, like, the Internet Chess Club, I've reported hundreds of people over, I mean, a very long period of time, like 15, 20 years. I've probably reported 100 people for being cheaters, and I think I can count on one hand the amount that were actually... Um, convicted of being cheaters because they don't have any incentive to to make paying people you know punish paying members um, you know make them go away and lose their money so the nice thing about Lee Chess is that yeah they can go ahead and and ban people for being cheaters without any repercussions you know financially but on the other hand I mean the administrators at Lee Chess you know they're, they're volunteers for the most part um, 
I mean, they make mistakes in, you know, like mistakenly thinking people are cheaters and maybe they're not. So you can't be 100% sure. There needs to be enough evidence. What is going on here? Well, we've got a better ending, but Max is hanging on. Yeah, he's tough. Max, Max is a good player. Um, we played just three games with Max. Actually, the simul game was a draw. I blundered horribly against him on Sunday yesterday last night. Um, what's he doing here? Your queen wasn't trapped. You had queen c5. <laughs> he panicked. He thought his queen was trapped. You have queen c5. Um, Max just panicked. So, anyway, yeah. I just, I've seen Lee Chess ban people a little quickly without that many games evidence. I feel like they should wait a little bit longer, you know, in some cases before they close people's accounts or whatnot. Okay, Halligator is a good player. We've got another 40 minutes left, guys, so let's... I had to think a friend of Yeroon was accused not long ago, and they wrote some forum posts to the amends to restore the account. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an important thing. There has to be, like, there has to be a means of repeal, you know. Um, if you are accused of being a cheater, there has to be a, a repeals or appeals process. It can't be, like, permanent, you know, no, no chance of appeal. Halligator. Now, Halligator is, is strong. It's 2300. We see a 200 difference in the ratings. That's pretty normal. Um, more than that, you know, I started to get suspicious of people. But notice lately the classical ratings do seem to be getting inflated. Um, earlier, I, uh, you know, I kind of dis this that theory, but I do I do like lately see a lot of players almost uniformly have this like 200 point difference between their blitz and their their classical rating. So I guess there's something to that. There's something to that theory, which a Halligator looks like it's, he's not really a blitz player um, like me. Well, I'm, I'm, I can go, I can go with blitz sometimes, but lately here on this, on this site, yeah, I played more blitz than, than classical. It's easier to play blitz games. Um, that's why I was kind of uh, dissing the, the theory that the classical ratings are inflated. It takes longer to play the classical game, so it takes longer for the ratings to get inflated uh, in the first place. You think like inflation would, would be easier to uh, to spot in the faster time controls. Bong Bang Bing said not enough time why I suck at blitz. Yeah, you've got to have an appeal, the ability to appeal if your account gets banned for cheating. The guitar player did change accounts at one point. Yeah, there was that. I remember that Bronx. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about him extensively while he's probably left. He said he left, but I do recall that. You know, he did have a second account. Um. So I don't know what's up with that, but. Okay, knight takes d4. I like to play this line because. There is knight c2 for white. If I play bishop d7, I've been playing um, bishop d7 I've played sometimes. There is an option here for white to play b4 if I play bishop d7. So I like I like this move order um, for black. There may be some funky move I can play, but I don't think that anything outside the norm is really threatening. Black plays a uh, blockade strategy. And oftentimes, in this variation, black transposes to what is like the main main line Marazzi. But Botvinnik played a blitz game once on a train. Um, well, I want to improve, you know, and and I think 
all of you guys do too. And I think um, the more long games you play, the better. That's all there is to it. Blitz is reasonable, but it can become addictive. You stop studying, um, you just play Blitz. Bullets even worse. So, you know, Blitz, like, you know, is used by players like Kasparov and Karpov, but within reason, you know, it's like they do other things besides just play Blitz all the time. Um, Blitz is one training method, but it's not the most important and it's not to be, like, used to the exclusion of other things. So Halligator and I are, I think we're in the main line here, uh, what is solidly what I would call the main line. The move order are a little bit unusual, but um, I also play this for white. Bishop f2 is a subtle move that, um, I don't want to say it's necessarily better than bishop e3, but it has its points. And now Halligator goes with, with rook c1. This is like old move, um, okay for white. But the modern interpretation is something like rook b1, rook fc1, and then rook c2. So now if I do queen b6, knight d5, we had a game like that, uh, we had a game like this the other day, like last week. Queen b6, except the rook, I think the rooks were different. It was against WGM Alexandra. Um, she's not really, or it's not really a WGM, but that's the name of the account. And there was like a quick knight d5, I think. Maybe it wasn't WJM Alexander, but somebody played knight d5 against me. I took, they took with a c pawn, and then I played like queen b4. And, and I think in this position, if I try to do that, I would think that white has a pretty solid game after something like queen takes queen, pawn takes queen, rook c2. On the other hand, I could double on the A file. All right, we'll try it. Knight on prees. Started playing chess online, mainly blitz. It affected my standard games over the board. Um, well, I haven't played enough standard games lately. I need to play more tournaments, but I haven't had time. Look FD1, so. White here kind of ignoring black strategic concept. We have B A four. <laughs> Freudian mention of B four. Um, so A four. Yeah. Sometimes I talk about my <laughs> my good friend Oligas on ICC. This was one of the only weak points I could find in his repertoire. Sometimes on the white side of the of the Marazzi, I actually took him out. He wouldn't play that well, um, and later he he started to avoid it against me. Um, B four, ooh, I walked into some sort of trap. It looks like I'm not really sure what's going on here. Um, I don't think it's a prepared trap. I mean, I think this is just a tactic that Halligator came up with out of, you know, necessity. So, I'm not really sure. He's going to get my e7 pawn. But we have a very, very dangerous pawn on a4 here. So, I, I kind of think that we're, we're alive here, basically. Despite the bad structure, this is a very dangerous pawn. Even if we drop a even if we drop the d6 pawn, I'm gonna have to watch the uh, watch the knight on c5. If I play a3, hmm. Okay, what's the best move now? Do I try to save this pawn on e on d6 with bishop e5? Kind of a standard idea in the Marazzi. Maybe okay here. Maybe it's okay. We don't have to panic. Um, then again, he can play bishop d4. 
that's not really clear either. Huh. No, I want to play. I want to play knight b3. But I'm just. I'm not seeing how it works. I've got the monstrous pass pawn. A, B, A, B. With the idea of like B2 and rook A1 and stuff. It almost works. Um, unfortunately, knight B3, A, B, A3, rook A2 looks like a solid blockade. But that's the kind of idea you've got to look for. Um, what do you think about Sicilian Gambit? Said Andrea. You mean the wing Gambit? I mean, it's playable. It's not great. It's something I would I would only play like as a sort of surprise. I wouldn't, you know, make it my. I wouldn't want to make it my like normal repertoire. A three. I was thinking about a3, then rook takes d6, and also knight takes d6 is possible to interpose that move. So a3, rook takes d6, knight b3, you know, he doesn't have to take. He can just move his rook somewhere, and um, then what do I do, you know? I control the a1 square. So it kind of feels like I have to defend myself. I guess alligator is better here. I like to uh I like to call him alligator. So we look for tactics. There doesn't seem to be anything there. It's close. Knight b3, a3. Doesn't quite cut it. And now we're we wasted a lot of time. Should b5 is a sort of normal Marazzi move anyway to induce f4 and weaken, weaken the e4 square. This is kind of messy. Okay, if f4, bishop f6, knight takes c6, pawn takes c6, e5. I want to give him too many ideas. I might have to play knight takes e4, f4, knight takes e4, pawn takes e5, knight takes d2, bishop takes d2, pawn takes e5. It's not that clear, but I don't, I'm not in love with it. Now he played rook d1. Knight b3, pawn takes a3 doesn't work. Um, rook e8. I don't have a lot of time here. He goes with the positional approach. Knight d5. It's not really threatening anything here. Except knight c7. That's kind of important. Knight c7. Rook c8 loses. Rook a c8 doesn't lose immediately. It's very awkward though. Almost does. Man, I don't really like this. So we're just slightly worse. I could have taken the knight on d5. Maybe that would be a little safer. Okay, this is not a bad move. Rook c8, knight b6, rook c7. White obviously has... Well, I wanted to say it's the better pawn structure, but actually it's not really the better pawn structure, just that he really um, he has uh, more pressure on my weakness. You know, I don't have any pressure on his weak pawns. I actually have one isolated pawn. He has two isolated pawns.
Now, trading the dark squared bishops may not be that bad for black. If I can remain with a good knight. But I feel like white has a solid, a solid position, so he shouldn't be worse. Guys, are going to be here every day this week, Monday to Friday, from 10 a.m. to 12.30. Um, Wednesday is a special version of the stream when I play Unusual Openings. I call it Weird Wednesday. Now, very important decision here. Pawn takes or rook takes? Rook takes might be safer. Pontes gives him a protected passed pawn. I'm leaning toward rook takes. And then we trade a set of rooks. We have to play the awkward move rook c6 here, but it's not bad. We have counterplay. Not sure, though he looks better. Um, my knight is a good piece, so I'm not sure white is necessarily better here. Brings his king to the center, understandably. Rook b6, maybe f6 first. King g7. All right. Putting all my pawns in dark squares, I guess. We've got a few on white, which isn't really what I want, but probably not fatal. Is king, king d4? I don't know if it does anything. This king seems well placed on e3. The question is, what should white do? You know, should he just sit there and kind of not do anything. Um, I think that the computer would like handily draw this for white. Um, sometimes humans will tend to lose with a bad bishop against knight, whereas the computer would never lose. I'm talking from experience playing a lot of engines in these kind of Marazzi positions. Okay, bishop there, logical. I want to get my rook to an active square. Also bring my king to the center though. It's difficult for his rook, you know, for him to use his rook here. I mean like to attack my pawn on, on a4. Can't play rook d3, so he's trying to... He's trying to get to b2. I'm not going to let him in there. And we're going to cut him off. So this is a classic Marazzi square for the rook. And white, white is just sort of holding. We're both holding, holding pattern. Maybe it's equal. Just kind of equal, theoretically, but I'm not really happy about that move. Now, a3, I might need to play. Can't let him... Can't let him play king c3, rook b2. Um, very important not to allow that... That exchange of... You know, that exchange of... Rooks and the king b4, and I might even be, like, losing if I'm not careful in the minor piece ending, I could even lose. Okay, guys, it's really just not a lot of time here.
G5 is just to kind of move on basic principles. Might be more aggressive to play like H5 here. I don't think I'm able to make progress. It's really up to white, you know. I don't think white really necessarily... Um, okay, I mean, I'm happy with a draw. I don't think I was ever, like, clearly better. White was a little bit better. So, Andre Peroni and, and Piece of Sheet would probably be the last games for today. I think this is a fair result, this game. Um, did you ever play online poker when it was legal in the US? Yeah, of course. Um, I wasn't that good until like 2008. I started to get really serious. Um, but of course I started playing, you know, like back in 2001 um, at first. So speaking of the wing gambit, but I didn't get really serious about online poker till later. Um, 2007, 8, 9, I was really getting into it very heavily, like full time almost when about 2009 came around. But I did play, you know, of course. And actually, you know, the, the fact that poker became illegal in the US affected me because I was still playing with an American account from over here. And, uh, you know, it cost me a lot of time because I had a supernova status on Poker Stars and then I had to, like, stop playing on my account and then it took a while to figure out what was going on and then I had to reinstate my account um, and prove that I was like a Hungarian resident and stuff so it really messed me up I actually lost a lot of time um, sorting out what to do you know when the USA illegalized <laughs> well the USA like basically tried to stop online poker um, I was starting to play a lot around that point. Speaking of poker, there is now talks about Amaya buying William Hill. And it's really, I don't know if it has to do with Brexit or, you know, it's funny that it comes up now, but it really sickens me because I really can't stand Poker Stars anymore and this whole Amaya company that like destroyed Poker Stars. And, uh, and now they want to buy William Hill. And apparently Amaya has like made a huge profit in this calendar year. I mean, I don't think they're making their profit on Poker Stars that much. I think, you know, they may be making it other ways or maybe it's like a lie. But I, I just find it hard to believe they're making massive, massive profits. And, uh, and now they're going to buy William Hill, which is going to eliminate like... That's the one site on iPoker where I'll occasionally play. Um, I, I always felt that, that iPoker was okay. There's not enough players, but... On the positive side, iPoker seemed legit and safe and, and respectable in a way. So I'm really, really sorry about this new news that it hasn't gone through yet, but this crazy Amaya company wants to buy William Hill now. I mean, that will like totally monopolize the online poker market to the point where Poker Stars basically owns almost everything except for party poker. When then I'll have nowhere left to play, basically, because... Um, you know, next thing they'll buy party poker and then they'll own everything. Um, all right, well, it won't, you know, I don't know what happens with iPoker, but William Hill is one skin on the iPoker network. Um, but they're, they're talking about buying William Hill, like the gambling, you know. William Hill is a huge English sports book. It's a giant company. That's the latest news in the industry there, which I'm not happy about, you know. Um, I wonder if it has to do with Brexit, though, and about regulations, about monopolies and stuff. Um, if this is something that's popped up because... Maybe because 
of Brexit, I don't know, you know, are the laws different if, if England leaves the, the European Union about, you know, companies building monopolies and stuff like that? It's a good question. Bishop to b3 now. So Andrea has a good game here. I really like the way that, you know, you've played. This isn't my usual response to this. To this, um, I don't normally play knight f6. I thought I'd try something new. But usually against a3, I play d5. So we're experimenting here. Rook takes a, excuse me, rook takes a3. I think um, knight takes maybe. Also bishop takes all captures there are, are interesting. What's wrong with poker stars? <laughs> everything i mean it's just totally ruined there's a quarter of the amount of players that there used to be um there are no there's no bonuses for regular players like as good as there used to be there's no um sit and goes are like dead it's just a disaster i mean it works it's fine it works but i mean and they also dissed like most of the supernova elite and a lot of strong players you know, who, who protested against their decisions. It's just no respect for, for the players uh, from Poker Stars. Uh, for me, it's just, it was game over, like last December when, when Poker Stars like wouldn't acknowledge the striking players and players who were complaining about structure of a rake back. They've, they've destroyed the site for, for the way, from the way it was um, a few years ago, so. If you like spin and go, um, it's it's a really great place to play poker. But if you like to play other things like tournaments and and you want to try to play online poker as a full time job, um, it basically sucks compared to how it was. So yeah, it's it's a disaster. Um, I I don't want anything to do with it anymore. Um, Poker Star has actually fought against some potential poker bills in California. Um, no, I mean Poker Stars was a great site. You know, they had a tremendous kind of rake back and and really great bonuses for regular players and and a lot of cool stuff like they've done away with um it's it's really just become about them making money completely very little given back to to the regular players now it's it's reached the point where um they're giving almost nothing back and uh and i don't want you know to deal with it anymore so they're not the same site that they were even two years ago. Here, man, or Andrea playing powerfully here today. Um, maybe Bishop takes F3. And Knight C6 or something like that. And he takes back with a pawn instantly, wow. Um, now Knight C6 not so convincing. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And knight c6, I guess. I feel a little bit kind of... I know that there's a lot of um, Americans out there who might even watch the stream who may be like, oh man, why are you saying Poker Stars sucks? You know, we're just getting Poker Stars in New Jersey. And I don't know, you know, I, I feel for those people who are like American and want to play online poker. But it's not, you know, you're not getting a great deal like in Poker Stars. Isn't that great? It sucks compared to how it was. It was really great at one point, but now it's nothing like that. They've destroyed a lot of things and screwed a lot of regular players over, basically. Why not recapture here? Oh, you're hanging a pawn? No. You had to recapture. Um, you have to recapture with the F-pawn here. Andrea, totally random. Like, I think he forgot his queen was protected or something. He played C3. But that's a terrible blunder. White had played a almost flawless game, I think, until this. Now the center falls apart. Um, Mubat 
You prefer full tilt poker. Full tilt poker is gone. Um, the another thing, another wonderful thing that, well, it was gone already. So I mean, poker full tilt poker has been gone um, for a long time, obviously. But um, yeah, so. I never really liked full tilt poker, but some people did, and that's cool. It was okay, um, except for the fact that they scammed a lot of people out of a lot of money, or just lost it, you know, um, which isn't cool. And the new wasn't ever really full tilt poker, it was just another version of Poker Stars. The new full tilt poker was simply, you know, the same players from Poker Stars playing on full tilt. It wasn't the real full tilt poker. Full tilt poker has been dead for a long time. Um, so there's nothing left. I mean, there's just poker stars and like party poker, which basically party poker sucks. Um, very few tournaments, very few players. It's, it's a shadow of what it was. I mean, 10 years ago, the poker online poker was awesome. You know, there were tons of players, even five years ago. Uh, it's now it's dead. It's like completely dead. And, um, I don't think it'll ever be the same. H takes G6. I guess that Poker Stars in America, like in New Jersey or whatever, will be better than nothing, but it's not the Poker Stars you once might have known. Um, so here, there's a mate. There's no mate. There's a perpetual at the moment, but I have Rook F6. Rook F6 seems forced. And white has a little bit of play. Um, shouldn't be enough, though. Well, the other thing, I mean, yeah, Jay Carver um, play on there. It's way better than nothing, yeah, but it's not what it was. Um, it's, it's a shadow of what it was. So you have to live with what you got, but... You know, when you've lived in the, when you lived in the, the plethora that was the former online poker, like, was a good thing, and, I don't know, man, just, Poker Stars doesn't respect uh, its regular players. I mean, you have a company that's not regulated in any way, you know, there's no way to know. I mean, when they have sit and goes, I mean, spin and goes, like, does anybody actually know, you know, who won that million dollars? I mean, we don't know if it's even real. Um, wow, Bishop A3. Um, I can just play King G6 here, King F7, um, Queen H5 check. Seems like I should get out of this perpetual. King f7, queen h5, rook g6. Right. A little scary. Andrea, I didn't see bishop a3. That is quite a sacrifice. But I'm getting distracted talking about poker again. But um, better than nothing, yeah. Better than party poker, I guess. That's all that's going to be left. And once Poker Stars eats up William Hill and I poker, um, actually, I'm not really sure what will happen with I poker. I don't know if it will continue to. William Hill is a key part of that, or what will happen? But I don't think it will last forever. Um, Yeah, Andrea playing on out of out of momentum here. We are taking him out. Another sacrifice. All right, guys, this is gonna be last game for today. Piece of sheet. He challenged me to four three. Okay, it's the last game. I normally ask for five three, but it's okay. We'll play four three. Um, Bovada's dead. Bovada died, basically, which was a long time coming, but. 
you know, I don't even understand how poker stars can exist in New Jersey. I mean, they're not even being regulated. Like nobody knows the the code or sees the code that they use to to run their software and stuff. I mean, it's scary. Like you can say the U.S. government is regulating it, but I seriously doubt like they've enabled anybody to to check all their all their computer code that runs the site and stuff. Um, but it's impo it's possible that they have different different software for the American side of their operations, but I just don't you know, I'm at the point where I don't want to play on unregulated poker sites. I mean it's just scary how bad they could scam people. So I had a good run, but I'm done with poker stars. Um I might occasionally play on there just just for fun, you know, but I would never put a serious amount of money in my poker stars account. It's like, until someone else comes along, I'm just gonna, you know, abstain from serious online poker. Piece of sheet A3. We're seeing a lot of this lately. 94, Nimzovich. But I was just sorry to see poker stars take over William Hill, because it's <laughs> like the last site I would even consider playing on. Um... There were hardly any players there, though. Very few. Still a little better than, than Party Poker. Which is also totally lame. I mean, the cash games might be okay, but tournaments are just like non-existent and dead on these sites, compared to how they were. Um, Queen C2. Alright, we're just going to play this position. A3... You know, the the A3 move may be argued like it's kind of a waste of time for white in these structures. I mean, I'm going to have to exchange this guy on the knight, sorry, the bishop on B4 uh, at some point anyway. So you can ask yourself, you know, does A3, do you really need to play A3? Piece of sheet. Um, they are in a public, yeah, Baza facing insider trading. Well, yeah, I mean, the guy, he's pretty mysterious, and I wouldn't trust him, obviously. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's game over for online poker, at least for the moment. Um, I mean, you guys in New Jersey, or wherever, California, wherever Poker Stars pops up in the U.S., um, I don't know what version of Poker Stars you're going to get, but it's... Uh, you know, it's pretty bad overall, I think. At least for a professional, um, from the perspective of a professional, I, I wouldn't. But I, I want it to be like regulated and, and like, you know, have their software checked by, by the government or something, because it's ridiculous. They could just be cheating everybody. I mean, nobody knows where the money goes. Um, that they pay out for sit and go or for spin and goes, they don't, you know, they're not open about any of this information. You know, there should be like publicly um, available information about money. You know, that people put into these things and just nothing. There's just nothing. I mean, it's just a, a huge mystery. You know, is Poker Stars honest about the money they they take in with their spin and goes and they give back and. Who's getting those million dollar payouts? Of course they can't tell you who they are because someone would come and like rob them or something, you know? Is that's convenient because now I'm <laughs> being paranoid again, but seriously, who's gonna trust online poker sites? Um, there needs to be regulation. And I just don't think that there is enough, you know? Um, I'm not a big fan of of the government having more power, but somebody has to regulate these online gambling sites. Seriously, not not enough to check that their random number generator, like, you know, is functioning according to a private investigator. Um, you know, we need to see like all the code in your entire system, you know, to know that nothing's in place to like cheat the players. And that something like that isn't ever on the table with poker stars or maybe any poker site. So, I don't know. It doesn't look good. The outlook of 
the outlook of online poker is, I think, pretty grim. Um, now the c4 pawn looks pretty bad here. What do we do here? Bishop takes g2. If we take, this guy's just hanging. So the c4 pawn is lonely after bishop g2. The c4 pawn is a weakness. Um, maybe we redeploy with knight d7, knight c5. Um, this is kind of a cheapo. What do we got? Queen takes, f4, queen a1 check, king d2, queen d4 check, and that would be like a perp. Um, so queen takes is kind of a trick. We have queen takes e4. And we like lose a piece or have to take a perpetual. Or maybe we just lose. He like walks to e1 and we just lose. So I have to take with a pawn here. So I'm missing something. Um, I really wanted to take with the queen. But it looks like I'm losing. Queen a1 check. King d2. Queen d4 check, and it has at least a draw in that position. And black's still fine, but this disrupts a lot of my play along the e-file. Lord Alamo, sorry about that, but uh, I do talk about poker, you know, so we can't, uh, can't make all the people happy all the time. Sorry if you were bored for 20 minutes. We'll have to make it more you know, you just tell us <laughs> what you want to talk about. Um, a lot of people here are interested in, in more than one thing. Um, ruling stance. So many go broke. Ex-programmers. Those guys make a fortune. Eventually lost everything. Um, there's a lot of carryover between poker and chess. A lot of players that play both. So I do sometimes like to have a discussion about poker in my stream if you don't like it you know you can tune it out and come back later um no hard feelings so queen c5 is a good move here it's good to be a little bit you know having more than one um focus you know chess 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 just chess all the time it gets a little monotonous, so we can talk about another subject from time to time. William, I want to say a thing. I'm not a chess expert. I would have moved rook a5 in the game. I would have moved rook a5. Rook in a5, the game was bad for you. Aha. I'm not sure. Oh, in our game? Um, in our game, Andrea. I'm a little bit short of time here, so... Um, not really sure what I want to do with this position. Maybe we've got a better structure. His king is open, but I'm going to start having trouble along the G file. Just calmly. I'm wondering who piece of sheet is. It's been kind of a mystery uh, player here. Pawn takes pawn. All right, we're gonna go for the throat. I've got to keep my back rank guarded. Um, say go for the throat, but I don't. I don't know. I think I know how to go for the throat. There's only one way. There's only one weakness in White's position that I can actually attack. I've got to watch out for this g7 and my back rank, but this move. Really scary moment. Um, had to make sure. How I'm going to do this because piece of sheet is playing like a maestro. King b1. Okay, that's sort of yeah what I figured. Wow, that I didn't figure on. Although maybe he's right. I don't know. 
I thought he would play queen b2 for sure, threatening mate and tying me down to g7. So he goes into this, where he's got back rank, he's got rook on the 7th, um, but he's down a pawn, so I'm not sure about this. And then this move, looks like he kind of went a little haywire. I think he had good chances there, but should have played queen b2, and even the ending might have been okay. Um, if you played an accurate move there. Now rook d5. I need to play this move. Still not over. Well, that move, though. Um, wow. I don't know what to do here. I mean, maybe I should have exchanged rooks. Couldn't really calculate. We are up a pawn. You're not going to lose on time now, are you? Should be winning. I mean, I guess the king and pawn in game was winning all the way. Um, I mean, there's no guarantees. We just create a decoy. And that's the last game for today. All we need is one. A piece of sheet. He hung in tough, but somewhere in that end game, you shouldn't trade queens and maybe not even rooks at the end. I think you had chances to survive. The c4 pawn was really... Um, yeah, rook c1 was just bad. After rook d7, it wasn't that clear. I agree with piece of sheet. Um, Gary Hertz, of course. Yeah, I mean, he's c committing suicide, I guess, trading into the king and pawn name. I couldn't calculate it completely. I figured I was winning, but it wasn't 100% sure. Sometimes the good king position might save him, um, but not enough there, probably. But yeah, don't trade the heavy pieces. Queen b2 would have also kept me very much tied up. All right, guys, it was an interesting stream today. Um, if you have a minute, look for that game on move 21, rook a5. Okay, let's take a quick look here for Andrea. Um, we can just see his game. Um, this is the game with Andrea. If we take a second to look at this, he wants to say rook a5 at some point. Um, now, what are you saying? 21? What? After move 21, rook a5, the idea of bishop a3 and rook takes f5. You mean... Yeah, this was the position. You played rook a4. The computer says it's not good. I took, you played bishop a3 check, I played king f7, but you don't have enough. Okay, this computer is not that strong. It's, it's running on Mozilla, it's weak, but it still would see if you had like a forced win. Um, it's it's not really enough. I'm not sure there's any particular move you saw. Um, I guess, you know, it was a creative try, but it just wasn't good. Um, it was almost working, but it was, you know, here you're apparently okay. Oh, rook a5, you mean literally rook a5. All right, I'm sorry. Um, I thought you were just mis mistaking the board. Oh, rook a5, I understand, okay. I thought you were just like saying the coordinates backwards. Rook a5, okay, rook a5. Yeah, not sacrificing more material. Wow, and the idea of this, uh-huh. That's pretty cool. And bishop a3. Did you mouse slip rook a4? By the way, was it a mouse slip? Did you mean to play rook a5? Um, yeah, that's pretty scary. Yikes. So I have to play, I think I have to play knight c4 
to stop bishop a3. And then you have a very strong kind of initiative here, rook g5. I have to be extremely careful. This is a mess. I don't trust this, this stockfish on, on my Firefox. I had no idea what, what what's going on. Um, it looks very, very sharp. Unclear would be a good cop out, you know. Um, so you blundered and you didn't see rook a5. Okay. Yeah, is a hot dog a sandwich? I think it is. I think it is, technically. Um, so, a hot dog sandwich. Yeah, it, this, this position is pretty messy. I don't know what would have happened here. But, you know, as we know, I mean, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have played this crazy move C3. You, you really have an interesting position here before this, this blunder. Um, bishop takes F3, pawn takes F3. You could have played queen takes F3, too. I mean, there's no... There's no reason you couldn't play queen takes f3, but okay, g takes f3, and I played pawn takes pawn, which is maybe not even the best, but... And here you played c3, which is a horrifying blunder. You should have played h5, the computer says, and with you, you have a strong attack um, for a pawn or whatever, so... Yeah, a couple a couple blunders, Andrea. Um, but that's normal, uh, and your progression you're gonna you're gonna blunder less as you as you get better um, but I thought it was an interesting fighting game you know nice nice try anyway yeah rook a5 was was really cool um, obviously I didn't see that but this is a risky line and I honestly I think that black should play you know the classical oh, classical way um, against the against this b4 I mean d5 Knight f6 is an experimental move. D5 is, is solid. Black is... The first game is Shirazi Kazgaleyev. Shirazi just won't stop after losing to, to Jack Peters in the US Championship, the six move loss or three move loss or whatever. Somebody, by the way, when I mentioned that game, they were like correcting me when I said Jackie Peters. But, um, you know, they're correcting me. I guess they saw that it's John Peters. But, you know, a little known fact is that John Peters actually grew up in, in New England and he's actually a Boston chess player and uh, all the all the locals in Boston still call him Jackie so if uh, whoever was here that corrected me on that a few weeks ago <laughs> just wanted to say that I just remembered you know um, Jackie Peters is remembered as Jackie Peters in the, in the Boston area so anyway guys we're done for today we'll see you later and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another stream at uh, 10 a.m. CEST. I'm speaking about Jack Peters because he, you know, he lost Shirazi. He had lost with, with White. Um, you know, famously to, to the old um, D5 pawn takes D5, Queen takes D5, and uh, A takes B4. I don't know what the story was. Maybe Shirazi like spent the whole night playing backgammon, and and like you know was just like sleep deprived or something. But that's pretty funny. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.